Ever since a few months ago when Gus released the first looks, the first glimpses at Windows 11 running on the original Surface Duo, it's been something I've been covering here and it's been something that tons of you have asked me, Shane, when are you going to do the dang thing and install Windows 11 on your original Surface Duo? And guys, I finally got around to doing it it was a bit of a difficult thing for me to do. The instructions are there, you know, you can read the instructions and do the thing yourself. In fact, I will have a link in the description to all of the all the instructions to do this, but this is not something that I typically mess with. I'm a fairly tech person, right? But this is not something I've ever done before. This is a lot of command line work that I'm just not really familiar with. So it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend many or any of you really to do this. And as we talk about this more in depth over the next few days, you'll understand why that is. But it is done, guys. When I open this thing up, you will see here that I am running Windows 11 on my Surface Duo. No, this is not an Android skin. This is actually Windows 11. So we're going to go to the overhead camera and I'm going to kind of walk you through how this is working and briefly talk about what isn't working, what is working, kind of the state of the project now as I see it. So here we are. We are in Windows 11 and there's a lot of things that are working well and a lot of things that aren't working literally at all. So the first thing that's obviously working is you do have both screens functioning just fine. I can tap on one screen and things are going to work fine over here. I can tap on the other screen and things are fine here too. Now I would like to have the task bar on both screens and I can't seem to find the setting to be able to do that. I go into my taskbar settings and it's actually telling me that I need to activate Windows before I can even customize it at all now, but there's no button. There was no button here to be able to put the taskbar on both screens. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on there, but you can see that it's over there. I can close the thing. Some things that aren't working though. Okay, so you can see down here that the sound is muted. That's because the audio, as far as I can tell, is not working. Networking, Wi-Fi, that's not a thing right now either. You can only get networking over Ethernet. Now, luckily, I have a hub that has an Ethernet port on it that was sent to me by Pluggable uh, many months ago, and that is working great for this. You can plug USB-C in, plug in a hub, mouse and keyboard, Ethernet, and all of that stuff will take over. If you close the thing, the screen does actually shut off. When you open it back up, there's your lock screen. You can unlock it. I haven't actually checked to see if rotation works. I don't believe no rotation, probably not working, but maybe, maybe you can do that manually. Um, let's go ahead and launch. Uh, let's go into like the settings app so you can kind of see how quickly everything's launching. And you, you can see here, it's actually running really, really well. It's actually quite quick moving through the interface here. I keep wanting to swipe in from the side. You could actually uh, maybe add a phone to your phone through the phone link app. How fun would that be? Let's launch up Microsoft Edge. Oh, file browser, wrong button. Wrong button again, wrong button for the third time and finally closed. Let's try Edge again. And you saw how quickly that launches as well. But if we want to, goodness gracious, if you actually want to do anything here, let's actually plug in my hub so that I'll have ethernet work and I'll have internet functioning and I can show you some stuff here as well. So we're plugged in now and you see we are now connected to the network. And like I said, this is the only way to get networking functional. You have to use USB hub and use an ethernet cable, something like that. Now let's open up Edge and let's go to, you can see the uh, the touch keyboard, pretty decent. Let's go to scaryifliteral.com first result. And I'm actually really pretty pleased with, with this in terms of how quickly uh, it loads web pages and so forth. It, it's it's fairly responsive considering the state that it's in. This has a lot of stuff going on. Now, of course, if I go to play a video, it will play. You, you, you will see some graphical glitches from time to time, some little bugs. You saw it again there, but it does play. No audio. That is a bit of a problem. Let's go ahead and close that. Let's close. Oh, so hard to hit these uh, to hit these touch targets on a screen this size. But that stuff is all working pretty well. I can actually kind of show you here a little bit more like concisely. This is what is working right now, according to Gus. The side buttons are working, but I will mention that the volume button obviously is not working, but the actual power button, that does work. I can hit it again and then I can swipe up to unlock the thing. That is working. USB is working, clearly I'm using it. Closing and opening the device correctly puts it to sleep. The CPU frequencies are working correctly. So it's actually running pretty well. 
Bluetooth is working, so that's a pretty cool thing. And I can show you that there. Let's see if it actually will pick up any of the mini Bluetooth devices in my house. And it absolutely is. So Bluetooth 100% is working. The GPU is working. Now you will see some graphical bugs from time to time. Little flashes of weird things going on, which I think I can actually demonstrate. Uh, photosensitivity warning here. Whenever I click this, yeah, there you go. That's going to be the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Please go away. So graphical glitches are definitely still happening. Both displays are working. Although in regards to both screens working, there's some trouble here, right? So you might think, well, oh, it's going to be super easy to just move apps back and forth from screen to screen. Well, let's uh, minimize, oh, wrong button. Let's, there we go. Let's change that to be small. And now let's try and just drag it from screen to screen, right? So let's see how this works. Let's try to drag it across. Couple of things happen. One, it wants to go into the, uh, you know, where it throws it up in the corner, or whatever you want to call that. So that's a problem. And then two, you open up your notifications on the other screen or your widget panel if you come to, if you go in that direction. So you wind up having to kind of do this thing where you like drag it over and then you pick it up over here, right? And then at that point, it's okay. But actually, don't know what that was. A little bit weird. My, maybe the update or something running did something funny. Either way, it's not nearly as good as it is in Android, obviously, because it just doesn't know what you're trying to do. It doesn't understand what you're what you're attempting to do. Now, if you do use an external mouse and keyboard, right, then, yeah, then you can drag it over here and do whatever you want. But when you're using touch, it confuses it a great deal. But that, that's definitely something worth pointing out. Touch is working. Pin on the left screen is apparently working. Can we can we actually test this out here? And look at that with the Surface Pin. I've actually got my cursor, my little floating cursor moving around. And the pin totally does work. I reckon I could probably pair this to it. That is, that is even difficult with a pin. It's a little bit off, right? You can see that there. It's a little bit off from where it actually should be. So there's, there's some problems with the pin still, but it, it is quote unquote, working maybe you could even pair it to the device and make it work a little bit better with the buttons and so forth uh, vibration motor and then both batteries so this is an interesting one as well whenever you actually click on your battery down here you'll actually see that it shows both battery cells because obviously duo has two battery cells and it actually does see both of them and it reports both of them separately but here's the most important thing nothing else works you have been warned and i think that that's kind of where i'm going to leave off on this video okay so you've seen that some things do obviously work but a lot of things don't work this is not something you're going to be daily driving okay can you plug a keyboard uh, you know i've got a wireless mouse and keyboard plugged into this can you do some basic things absolutely but almost nothing works on this okay so wi-fi doesn't work the speakers don't work that's a really important thing to not have functional so there's a lot of stuff working a lot of stuff not working let me know in the comments stuff that you want to see me test okay drop some comments and i'll get to as many of them as i can over the next couple of days on uh future videos so guys thanks for watching massive massive shout out to gus for the work that he's done on this project i will link in the description to this, uh, to this project, should you want to take on this enterprise yourself, you're free to do so, although probably not yet advisable. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.